What's good everyone? This is Precog from headphones.com and today we finally have an item that I am actually enthusiastic to talk about and that is the Moondrop Variations. I did a written review of this a while back but I never got around to doing a video review which now I kind of regret and which is why I'm making this. Uh, for those of you who are not aware, the Moondrop Variations is Moondrop's first tribrid IM that uses a dynamic driver, balanced armatures, and the Sony and EST drivers for the treble. Now, it's worth noting that this is not the first IM that Moondrop has released with the Sony and EST drivers. That honor goes to the Moondrop Solus, their actual flagship IM, but I'm going to tell you straight up that I don't think it's very good and that the Variations is just better. And I think that Herbert, the CEO of Moondrop himself, has even said that the Solus was a bit of a disappointment. And the only reason why they even made it was because the market sort of called for it. But yeah, moving back to the variations, the variations clocks in at $520 and I bought this with my own money um, in full disclosure. Let's get right into the review. Okay, and here is the packaging for the Moondrop variations. It's got this like Wife on the front carrying like bread. I don't really know what's going on here, but I'd say this is maybe a solid five out of 10 on the waifu scale. Could definitely be better. And um, yeah, just sort of out of place if you ask me. And I'm talking about the bread, by the way, the waifu is fine. Okay, and here are the ear tips that come with it. You basically get three sets of their silicone ear tips. And then I believe three sets of their misfit foam ear tips. And these are in the sizes of small, medium, and large. Okay, so I forgot where I put the case, but I'll throw it in on a B-roll. Um, it's basically just like a sort of like a, a cylinder sort of almost and you just unfold it. Um, it's kind of cool actually. It has a magnetic latch and it's pretty similar to the one that comes with the uh, Moondrop Kato. Except they changed the color. It actually used to be blue but the one I received is now black so I'm not sure what's up with that. Okay and here is the cable that comes with the variations. I would say it's definitely a step up over the Moondrop S8 and the Moondrop Blessing 2's cables and that it has a swappable termination at the very end where you have your choice of 2.5 millimeter, 3.5 millimeter, and 4.4 millimeter terminations. So yes, very handy. Um, it does come off, I guess, a little bit cheaper than maybe stuff like do new stuff, but um, it'll get the job done. And then if you take a look at the variations itself here, you'll notice that it is very similar to the Moondrop Blessing 2. And in fact, I would say that they were almost using the same exact shell in terms of the size. And if you're wondering about the laser engravings, they're just on the surface, so no, you cannot um, fire your nails on this one, unfortunately. Not that anyone would want to do that anyways, just pointing it out. Okay, and here they are in my ears. As you can see, I get a very good fit with them, or at least what I think is a very good fit. Um, they are on the larger side, so be aware if you have smaller ears. So yeah, what's funny is that I remember only being able to wear the Moondrop Blessing 2 for a couple hours when I first got them, but after hundreds of hours of wearing IMs, I guess my ears have just sort of accommodated and just adapted to the just cramming shit in my ears. And now I can wear the variations for like maybe three, four hours with no problems. Um, but yeah, really surprising to me as well, how well these fit me now. But again, be aware that they are on the larger side. So if you have smaller ears, this might not be the IM for you. All right, let's talk about the actual sound of the variations now. I think that the best way of summing up the overall presentation of the variations is that it's basically what the Harman in your target should have been. If you guys have read my reviews for any period of time, then you'll probably know that I don't think very highly of the Harman IM target. Um, it's definitely a good baseline, but it does have its flaws, specifically in the upper mid-range and the treble regions. The upper mid-range tends to be a little bit too forward, which in turn makes it sound quite anemic in terms of the thickness of mid-range notes. The lower treble tends to have too much energy, and then the upper treble does not have enough energy. And it's just sort of a consequence of them having to slope it off to account for uh, most listeners having quite a lot of variability in their HRTF past like 10k hertz or so. Just in general though, I would say that the Variations is the best interpretation of this target that I've heard in an IM to date. Starting with the bass response, it is excellent. It is almost entirely relegated to the sub-bass frequencies and with excellent amplitude at that. Now with that being said, it does have very little mid-bass, so I would stay away if that is not your thing. In addition to that, there is a recession at around 200 hertz or so, which has the effect of sort of separating the bass response from the rest of the frequency response. It is very similar to if you have heard a speaker set up with a um, subwoofer. Um, it just sounds very distinct and some people might not like it, but you are going to get very clean bass notes as a result. In terms of the intangible performance of this driver that Moondrop is using, I would say it's definitely a step above the ones being used in the Blessing 2 items, which I found were leaning on the drier side and they didn't have very much bass texture. So yeah, this one is a little bit more balanced. It definitely has that um, sense of slam to it that I think that the 
Dusk and the Busing 2 were sort of missing. But at the same time, I don't necessarily think that this is the best dynamic driver that I've heard for this price point. That would probably go to the um, Shure EJ07M actually. I don't see a lot of talk about that AM, but it actually has a fantastic base response and the driver being used in it as well sounds very high quality. Okay, so the mid-range is going to be, I think, a love-or-hated affair, despite the um, variations arguably being better than the Harman target for this. Uh, it does slope off of like 3 to 4K hertz of the more forward Pina compensation, so you don't get that sense of sibilance, but it is still quite forward and it can come off a hair shouty. This is especially apparent when you're listening in a louder environment or there's ambient noise in the background. What often will happen is that the ambient noise is going to sort of cut down the bass level, or your perception of the bass level that is, and in turn make the mid-range sound like it's more forward and more shouty. So yeah, while I do enjoy the mid-range listening in a quieter environment, it does become a hair fatiguing when I'm on the bus or I'm biking with the variations. Um, just in general as well, again, the isolation is pretty average, so I don't think you should expect the variations to be like an IM that you can sort of um, use for any sort of genre. Uh, there are certain genres for sure that are gonna come off a little bit shouty on the variations. Another reason some listeners might wanna avoid the variations, of course, is because the lower mid-range tends to lean on the thinner side. Um, notes sound very crisp and clean, but again, they're thinner and some might find them anemic. Okay, so the trouble response of the variations is where I think I am most impressed with what Moondrop has been able to do. If you have taken a look at my ranking list or read my reviews, then you will know that there is exactly one IM out of like 200 plus IMs that I've heard that I think has a good Sonyan EST implementation. And that is the Elysian Annihilator. Wait, I messed that up. It's not Elysian, it's Elysian. I know that because Resolve corrected me on that last time. Uh, but yeah, so I don't, just so I don't mess it up again. While the Moondrop Variations definitely does not have that same level of intangible performance, that sense of immediacy and that excellent sense of airiness that a true electrostatic is sort of able to deliver, it is a very smooth response that does have good extension into the um, 15k Hz airy regions that um, I generally listen for. Intangible performance as well is not bad. It does sound, I guess, a little bit soft maybe compared to the Moondrop S8 in terms of the attack of percussive instruments. But by no means do I find myself like wanting more out of this trouble response. It's very good for $550. I lied, $520. I keep messing up the price of this IM, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, really solid trouble response overall and probably one of the few EST implementations that I can currently live with. Okay, let's talk technical performance because I really think that this is an aspect with which um, the variations is a little bit underappreciated. The detail retrieval firsthand is very good for $550, probably one of the most resolving sets that I've heard up until you get to the Moondrop S8 at $700 or so. Um, and I say this in the sense that I personally think that it outresolves stuff like the The Audio Monarch and the The Audio Clairvoyance. And I've AB'd them extensively, by the way, just to be clear on that. So yeah, really good sense of detail, not quite up to par with maybe the Kilobuck contenders, but really good for $500. Uh, enough that I would personally consider it to be like probably at the very top, and I think I've ranked it as such on my ranking list. Imaging performance is good, but not great. It's probably around at the level of the Moondrop Blessing 2. Um, personally, I don't really index too heavily for the like sound stage width and stuff like that because it doesn't really exist in IMs most of the time. But yeah, I'd say it's above average, but not really anything groundbreaking from the Moondrop Blessing 2 series. Now, I do think the Moondrop Variations is better than the Blessing 2 series, and it sort of stands out for $550, or $520, excuse me, is in its dynamic performance. It is just a very blammy set. Like you can feel that sense of punch that I feel like a lot of the IMs in this price segment are sort of missing. Um, so yeah, and I say this in the sense that like dynamic swings, so like gradations and volume, they really pop at you on the variations. And part of this just might have to do with the um, high contrast between the piano compensation and the bass response. They're very distinct. So like piano keys just sort of pop out and they sound like separated from the rest of the stuff. But um, in any case, that perception is definitely there of the Moondrop variations having above average dynamic contrast and as well as a sense of punch to it. Okay, so let's talk comparisons now. And in terms of comparisons, I really think that there are only a few competitors in this price range against the variations. Predominantly, they are the Dunu SA6 and then the Shure EJ07M. I wish I could comment on the Moondrop, uh, not the Moondrop, the The Audio Oracle and the Excalibur. Unfortunately, I've not heard them. However, considering that I already think that the Variations is better than the Monarch and the Clairvoyance, I don't really think they're exactly in the picture. But that's just my take, and um, I actually haven't heard them, so you'll have to take that with a grain of salt. So relative to the SA6 and the EJ07M, 
I've placed them on the scale of aggressiveness as the SA6 being the least aggressive, the EJ07M sort of falling in the middle, and then the uh, variations being the most aggressive out of the three. So starting with the SA6, the SA6 is definitely going to be for listeners who want a more smooth laid back presentation. The mid range on it is definitely not as forward, nor is the lower treble where it has something of a recession around like, I think 6K Hertz, like the QDC IMs, which kills a little bit of like stick impact and um, that sense of maybe immediacy to treble hits. But at the same time, it is a very pleasing IM and it's more for the uh, listeners who listen to maybe more aggressive music like myself and want to not be distracted when they're listening to that stuff. In terms of technical performance, I would expectedly put the variations ahead of the SA6, and I say expectedly because this is just sort of baked into the tuning, the frequency responses of them, the variations just has a lot more upper mid-range and more treble presence, which is going to give it that perception of detail. With that being said, the SA6 does have very nice timbre for a BA monitor, and it also punches surprisingly well, uh, given that most BAs sound quite flimsy by comparison. Now the EG07M is an interesting one and I think it's pretty underrated actually. It's more reminiscent of I think the Thea Audio Clairvoyance in that the mid-range and the peanut compensation aren't as forward and it's a little bit warmer moving from the bass regions into the lower mid-range. So again it's a smoother presentation than the variations and in fact I kind of like the bass response on it more than the variations I think. It has maybe like one or two decibels more of sub bass at around maybe like I'm talking like 20 or 30 hertz but it really gives it that sense of bounciness that I am looking for in a, um, in a hybrid IM. The EJ07M's biggest like weakness, I guess you could say, would probably be its treble response, at least in terms of tuning. It's a little bit sucked out in the lower treble, like the, uh, the SA6, but then it also has another suck out in the mid treble um, that sort of takes away that sort of aggressiveness up top that the variations exhibits at times. That's going to be more of a preference thing, I think, but it is worth noting that the treble response of the AJ07M is not as smooth as the variations. Um, in terms of technical performance as well, you can expect the variations to be more technical, it just has better detail retrieval, and in particular, the staging sounds more expansive. That's what I noticed most about them. But yeah, the AJ07M is still a really solid pick for $600, and I would probably go for that if maybe the um, variations or maybe the Monarch is not working out for you. Okay. Moving back to the Moondrop variations, in conclusion, I think that this is a very solid IM. It is definitely not without weaknesses. In particular, it suffers from a lot of the issues that are just sort of inherent to IMs that follow the Harman target, which personally I am not a big fan of, again. But on paper, there are very few IMs that compete with the Moondrop variations. And in fact, I would say that the Moondrop variations is probably the best IM on paper that you can buy for $520. Oh, before I forget, um, if you were looking for a comparison to the Blessing 2 and the Blessing 2 Dusk, the best way to think of it is that the Moondrop Variations is those IMs on steroids. If you're someone who likes the Blessing 2, I don't necessarily think, however, that you should go for the uh, Variations as the bass response is quite different. Um, but if you are coming from, if you like the sound that the Dusk delivers, then you're going to like the Variations and it's just better all around in most ways. Um, with that being said, if you already have a Dusk, then there's not much point in upgrading for the variations as the difference is more marginal in the grand scheme of things as diminishing returns kick in. And yeah, I hope this review was informative. If it was, drop a like and I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks so much for watching.